Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Monday. It's Daryl here. It's 7 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Uh, I've been up since 4 a.m. I've been going through, I've read a couple newspapers, I've been watching the news reports on TV, and I've been going through the stuff here uh, through throughout different uh, social media platforms. I want to talk about Trump's rally a little bit, and I want to talk about the election and black the Black Lives Matter movement a little bit too. All right, we'll start out with the, the rally. And, and Trump's ridiculous, I, I, calling it ridiculous is, is an understatement. His, his comment uh, about cutting back on testing uh, for the coronavirus. All right, I could already hear the Trump supporters saying it was a joke. It was a joke. Uh, you look at the context. You look at the way he said it. And here's the big thing. Now, I, I've spent almost an hour now look, going back because I know that I've heard him say this before. I know that he said this at least once or twice before about cutting back testing. I have heard him. I've seen his administration hint around about cutting back on testing. I know I've heard it. And you look at the context he said it in. It, it, you know, all right, here, I tell you what. And it, what if we, if I give you all guys all that, and we'll say it was a joke. What kind of... Or you know, we're just get cresting, uh, and we're well, we're poss- possibly looking at a second wave. I mean, really, the leader of the, of the country is going to joke around about the one thing that's helped get our country back on its feet again. Um, it's it's like a uh, it's it's like going for uh, lessons on how to handle a firearm, and the firearm instructor joking. And putting the gun, telling the people to put the gun, their gun, the gun in their mouth. That's that's like that's about the analogy I can come up with. Um, I don't know if it's that that turned off a lot of people. I don't. I don't. I don't think it was just that. Um, and what I'm talking about here is, I, I heard it first amongst my family members, and then I started to see it on Facebook, where I saw Trump supporters talking about. Um, they were just upset, disgusted, uh, not happy with the, the rally. And I tried to find out more about this. And I got varying answers. And I, was, I wasn't satisfied with these answers. Here's what a lot of, a good amount of Trump supporters said to me. That uh, they're not going to gonna vote for Biden, but they're not going to vote for Trump. They're not going to vote at all. This is something I, I, I've heard more and more over, I'd say, the last three days. Um... He he somehow he lost Trump support. Uh, he he lost he lost support over uh, after this rally. The interesting thing too, I noticed it was uh, it was almost uh, I say about three quarters of these people were women that decided that they were no longer in favor of him. I got the distinct feeling that these these women that were Trump supporters that are saying that not, they're not going to vote that they didn't like they didn't like his his performance. He didn't they didn't like the whole deal with the rally. And I get the feeling that they felt like he was being arrogant. <laughs> I mean, like, as if that's news to the rest of us. But there was something he said. There was something that he must have put out there. I, I didn't watch the rally. And um, just did not go over well with a lot of his supporters. Uh, uh, seriously. And I, I've heard this more and more uh, over the last couple of days. People saying that uh, former Trump supporters saying they're just not going to vote now. They had nothing good to say about Biden either. Uh, nothing good to say about Biden, but they said they're not going to vote. So this brings me to my point. Um, this highlights the reason, the, the fact that we need a third party system, that our, our, our system is broke. Um, I've seen more articles this morning about Republicans trying extremely hard to redistrict gerrymandering. Um, th- this has to be stopped. Personally, the, the the situation with lobbyists to me it is the biggest biggest sign that we have a broken system. Basically, it's saying that our concerns, what's important to us, we send these people to Washington to, to work for us, to represent us, and it's not even close to that. Um, the lobbyists come in with the money, and they get the ear of the people we sent there, our employees, and they do the bidding of whoever pays them. And that's, that's our system now. Um, what we, what, what's good for us, what we want, doesn't matter. 
Um, that that needs that that's that's a corrupt system without a doubt. What I'm seeing here too is after I heard this more and more, see, it, you would think this would make me happy. The fact that I'm seeing Trump supporters drop off, drop, jump off the Trump train, so to speak, and you would think that make me happy, but it really doesn't. Because when I hear people say that they're not going to vote at all, there's just something. Believe it or not, yeah, I'm a liberal, but I do love this country and I do love everything about it. Um, you know, and this is one one of the things we're most proud of is this right to vote, our our, our privilege to vote, and um, it doesn't make me happy to to hear people say that they're not gonna, you know, they're just not gonna vote. I think what that says is is another is just saying outright that you know you're having people that don't want to participate in a in the system in this privilege that one of the things we're most proud of that that's the the sure sign that our system is broken. Um, they just don't want to participate in it. Um, then I've seen videos and I've seen stuff from other people talking about, well, how do we start this? How do we how do we get a third party going? And the answer is always starting at a grassroots level. Um, you know, even just being running for your local dog catcher, for your local town manager, whatever, and starting it start basically starting from scratch, from grassroots level, and starting a new political, uh, a, a new, um, branch, a, a new, um, party. And that's the way to do it. Um, I think that's what we need. I, I see, uh, I'm starting to see, this is, this is the thing that kind of worries me too, is I'm starting to see a mirror image of every of what happened in 2016, where there was a lot of people that weren't happy with, with that, didn't find Trump a good candidate and didn't find Hillary a good candidate. So it was uh, a choice of the le lesser evils, whoever you consider that to be. And that's exactly now what I'm starting to hear again with these Trump supporters seem seeming to drop off uh, support for Trump, but they don't have any, uh, any love for Biden either. And, uh, I think that's the surest sign that we need. We have to start. We have to start getting more focused on starting a, at least having a three-party or more system, more choices. Um, this really isn't choice. Um, it's not. It's just, it's the same coin, different sides of the same coin. Is that what they say? All right. So anyway, that's my thoughts for today. You guys have a good Monday.